welcome to Becca's last day in Norwich. I'm Rebecca Fine, and this is Marilyn with Becca, and we are not going to ramble about Norwich today. No, we're going to talk about hydrohegemony. The last two sessions, we gave an overview of power and hegemony, and how power and hegemony collide to shape relations and our world uh, in often uneven ways. Hydrohegemony uh, refers to the use of power and hegemonic relations focused on. I know, shocking. Water. Uh, Zaytun and Warner in 2006 published an article uh, with uh, introducing the framework of hydrohegemony that was really focused on uh, transboundary river uh, and water basin interactions. So they looked at when states share a river basin, so should, like have a shared water source kind of thing, which states get how much of the water? How how does that happen? Uh, which states get more and less? Why? Is there a pattern? Uh, so this framework of hydrohegemony is analyzing how control over water resources is gained, maintained, might be changed, for example. They offer three pillars of hydrohegemony. Um, so they have this fun little graphic that, you know, like has the three pillars of hydrohegemony and then three pillars. And you can make those pillars like shorter and longer to represent how much a riparian one of the states in the basin, you know, has control over it. You know, you know, the longer the pillars, the more power they have, that kind of thing. Anyway, their original three pillars are one, riparian position, where you are, upstream and downstream in the river. Um, if you're at the very head, like, you know, where <laughs> the river starts, technically you have more water, you could, you know, dam it all and keep it from flowing. Uh, power is the second pillar, and they include all three kinds of power in that pillar. And then the third pillar of the original framework of hydrohegemony is the exploitation potential. Um, this is infrastructure, this is technical capacity. Um, so even if you're at the very top of a river, if you don't have the money or the know-how or whatever to build dams, it's not going to help you very much, you can't actually dam it. So you don't just need the geography, you also need the exploitation potential. A few years later, in a follow-up article, uh, Zaytun and Cascao suggested a slightly revised framework of hydrohegemony, uh, in which they actually suggested four pillars and split out the three dimensional dimensions of power that we talked about a few days ago. Um, so now their revised framework of hydrohegemony has four pillars, one with geography, uh, so that's the riparian position, the upstream and downstream, but then also how much of the river basin you have, right? So you have like this much, and another country has this much, even if they're downstream, you know, they have more places to build dams and that kind of thing. Um, so geography, and then the three pillars of power, uh, the material bargaining and ideational power. Um, so for them, the exploitation potential, that was its own pillar in the original framework, kind of is absorbed under material power, you know, so kind of the brute force, the technology, the infrastructure, the money to build the infrastructure, along with military force and those kind of things. Bargaining, the ability to shape agendas and discussions, and then ideational, the ability to shape not just discussions, but narratives and perceptions and base assumptions. The original framework of hydrohegemony was meant to be prescriptive. Um, it was meant to point out where hegemonic relationships are, and also potentially suggest a way forward. Because the, uh, Zaytun and Warner argue in their original uh, article that not all hydrohegemic relationships are necessarily negative ones. Uh, there are positive forms of hegemony, right? The, the connotation is that of leadership and authority, you know, which you know, could kind of be seen you know, the torchbearer, you know, like, like someone who knows what they're doing uh, and is able to be an example. That's one form of hegemony. So hegemony isn't necessarily all about bullies. Right, it, it could be about people in groups who know what they're doing and are able to help other people in groups also know what they should or are doing. Uh, so with this framework, they're hoping to you know see who's got what, you know, and if someone has you know this much of the geography power, but this much of you know infrastructure power, and you know there's another one scheme like there's something unequal happening there, and maybe there needs to be a shift. Uh, but identifying it helps to allow for there to be a shift uh, and hopefully can show hegemons how they can get to that place where they're being a leader instead of a bully. Hydrohegemony. <laughs>